round four of the chess olympics in baku was really dramatic and well there was so much going on and i've got a lot to get through so without further ado let's turn our attention to the big pairing in the open section ukraine against russia so two of the favorites in in the event already meeting each other and before even a move was made there was uh, well, an interesting move off the chessboard. Sergei Karyakin, of course, representing Russia, was rested for this match. Now, perhaps they felt that it was a little bit sensitive politically because, of course, Karyakin grew up in the Ukraine and represented the Ukraine for many years before switching his allegiance to Russia. So Kramnik was on board one for this match. Anyway, let's... Uh, take a look at this game first. This was the first game to finish. Anton Korobov representing Ukraine against Jan Nepomnyshi for Russia. Korobov with the white pieces looks as though he has pretty pleasant position. A nice pawn chain. Very attractive pawn chain if he can maintain it. Um, and white pieces look pretty well placed. Very nice bishop on d5. Um, but Nipomnishi started the fight back with knight f6. Of course, if that's taken, then there's a big check on e3, and, well, one of those rooks is going to drop. So why can't uh, capture, but, well, after 21 minutes thought, rook c2 was played. So just protecting that rook, so... Uh, now the bishop is, is no longer pinned on d5. Uh, Nipomnishi exchanged on d5. Now that in itself is quite a daring decision because, of course, bringing the knight into d5 allows the knight to settle on f6. So you have to, to judge this position pretty well. Um, you know, is this good or bad for white? Well, here, I think, if white wanted to play reasonably safely, he could exchange queens and play b3 and play this endgame. And this is this is a tricky position. Um, you know, if, if a white rook's, rook ever manages to find its way around to here, then, you know, there could be mating threats on, on the cards. But I think black is okay here, and even... You know, there's potential to, to use this majority. Double-edged endgame, but black should be okay. But Korobov exchanged that bishop on g4. Now, perhaps, you know, he was wanting to use this, this impressive kingside majority. If he can exchange queens, I think white will stand well. But if he can't then that king is pretty drafty. There's a lot of windows open around white's king, open diagonals here. Um, so it's a double-edged position. Queen f5, you can see that queen you know, maybe wanting to come in here, You know, maybe supporting a rook uh, on the d-file, maybe a rook d4 coming. So it's quite a double-edged position, and this was a double-edged move. King f3. Uh, white does not need to play like this. If he can trade queens, all well and good. But suddenly, good old Harry launches forward, and uh, black has pretty serious counterplay here. So the queen just ducking in and out on these on these light squares, and, and now h4, and this is already getting pretty tricky. I think Korobov basically misjudged the situation. Um, okay, he throws in this pawn capture, of course. There's a, a Zwischen Zug here, so that has to be recaptured. And now, of, of course, white had to maintain the challenge on the d file, but now the rook switches to the h file, and... So white's king is looking a bit funny here. But for the time being, everything is okay. But now, well, yeah, this is g4. Things start to open up even more. And, well, as usual, you know, if we compare the two kings, 
black's king very safe on g7 but white's king starting to open up and now well running towards the time control white made a very very risky decision to try to run the king over to the queen side if the king can get to b1 then white may be able to use this pawn majority and you know controlling the d-file this could be pleasant for white but it can't get there queen d7 is a good move check if the king comes over to c2 then queen a4 check hitting the pawn checking the king so the king comes back and now rook h2 hits the queen can't rook can't be taken because this rook is on Queen here and Queen takes f4 and black is just a pawn up winning position. So the king had to dive back, but well, you know, this this is absolutely dreadful. Check. Now if king f2, queen e7 keeps the attack going. Uh the king stepped up, uh, but this is fatal. Queen c6 check, and white had to resign if rook d5 blocking, and queen a4 check. And mate follows shortly. So I think bad misjudgment from Korobov there. Uh, but Nipomnishi uh, uh, held his nerve very well indeed. Uh, let's so Russia one up. Uh, let's go to the game between Grishuk and Volokitin. Um, here you can see uh, Grishuk with the white pieces is a pawn up. But his king is a little bit uh, drafty. Once again, we see black king very safe, white king uh, a little bit exposed. But white's queen can cover here. Um, can white make anything of this extra pawn? Well, uh, I mean, black's pieces are, are so well coordinated that this is going to be tough, particularly with the exposed king. Here, I think Grishuk made a misjudgment but it's not an easy position he played f4 um i mean maybe he should have played f3 although i can imagine that he wasn't too happy about this rook swinging across to g5 so also not tricky but not not easy but he played f4 and after queen e2 this is very difficult already hitting the bishop had to go back and now Black took on d4. Now, if white simply recaptures, I mean, maybe this is what Grishuk overlooked. Um, so black exchanges, and now simple move, rook c8, threatening rook c2, and this is really nasty. So Grishuk basically just, well, hit, hit the queen, um, and after this check, exchange queens, but now, of course, it's black that it's going to have the extra pawn. And, and you know, there's a threat to check down here and, and take this one. Um, and this is just a very, very unpleasant ending indeed uh, for white. It's, it's a dreadful position, actually. And, well, Volokitin, he had a, he had a good day yesterday. Um, beating Friedman in the the match against Germany and he had a good day today as well his technique was excellent King came up um, again if this pawn is taken then there's this check on d2 uh, which is very nasty um, but things got even worse for white um, so Volokitin has held this pawn and now f5 and he joins things up. Rook h8, yeah, this is really nasty. If rook h1, then g5 is an excellent move. Going to exploit this pin after rook takes pawn. g4, well, black is going to exchange off all the rooks for a winning endgame. So king g3, but now g5, uh, this can't be taken because of f4 check. So with these connected pass pawns, of course, black is completely winning and after king, king f5 yet another tactic threat rook takes pawn and g4 check utterly winning so grishuk resigned so 
Ukraine uh, even the score up there, one all, two games to go. Let's go to Tomashevsky against Ponomaryov. I should say in the other game, um, Ilyanov uh, against Kramnik. Ilyanov was slightly better against Kramnik. Um, so if Russia wanted to win the match, then they really had to make something of this game. And Tomashevsky here with the white pieces is certainly uh, for choice in this position. Ponomaryov, former FIDE world champion, very decent player, um, defending doggedly with black. You can see that Tomashevsky has this nice space advantage. Um, and he's trying to break through on the king side, but Ponomaryov defending well. Um, and even trying to target this pawn on h4. Um, I mean, one strategy for white is to try to close the position with g5 and then maybe put a knight on d3 and go for an f4 break. But it's it's difficult to break, break black's position down. But Tomaszewski went for another idea. He played like this. And then in this position, he simply gave away the h pawn. hoping to try to get a breakthrough on black's king. Now, of course, if g5 that would, to hold the bishop, that would be horrendous because the knight hops into f5. So black has to allow the queen to come down, but black is still very solid here. I mean, this was played running up to the time control, and you know maybe Tomaszewski overestimated his chances because here... Ponomaryov is super solid. Um, you know, that king is actually safe in the middle of the board, and, and white isn't really getting anywhere. And now the queen comes in. Well, even, you know, white has to be careful because his king's a little bit exposed. And now pawn number two drops, and basically uh, Ponomaryov managed to consolidate and held these extra pawns and won the game. So three games gone and uh, Ukraine 2-1 up. And in the other game, Ilyanov held this slightly better position against Kramnik. And basically when he saw that um, the, the team was 2-1 up, he didn't press any more and made a draw. So Ukraine beat Russia 2.5, 1.5. Massive disappointment for Russia. Now, let me turn to India against Cuba. Very close match. Um, and, you know, two, two big teams. Cuba are always a very, very strong team. Um, but India... Well, also with, with an excellent team. And, well, let me introduce a, a player to you, Vidit Gujarati from India, uh, playing Quesada from Cuba. In this position, um, well, Gujarati doesn't look like to have a huge advantage here. He has a bishop against knight, but not such a great piece at the moment. But let's see what happened. Bishop f1. Of course, the king steps out of the way because uh, this bishop comes out to c4, but king not so well placed on the back rank. Let me just scoot through these moves. So suddenly white looking good, um, but Gujarati's technique very nice here. Didn't mind giving away this pawn. Looks a bit scary with black's rook on the second rank. Um, that evens up the pawn count. What's crucial is that black doesn't have time to get rook number two involved because of the weak back rank. After h5, white is just in time to trade rooks. And now in this position, rook and bishop are so superior to um, rook and knight. Now, this is a crunch moment. White needs to bring the king into the game. Now, maybe black should have traded but this is still a tricky position because, you know, these pawns on light squares, maybe this king is going to dash over here. White is certainly has winning chances. But, well, 
black declined the exchange of rooks and now actually it's very very simple h4 is a nice move to fix these pawns on light squares and to restrict the king and the rook is just rampant here uh, black has no real counterplay f4 desperately trying to take a pawn here but white is having none of it and actually this is very very simple let's just go through to the end of the game white is just taking this b pawn that's a nice move actually the king is in trump some trouble and now the king can come out if necessary and here's how the game finished uh, a checkmate threatened on h8 king step back and now a nice little tactic to finish f6 black resigned if the pawn is taken then Bishop C2 check wins the rook. So um, Gujarati, 22 years old, rated already, already rated 26.69, with a really important victory. And India beat Cuba two and a half, one and a half, big victory. Now let's move on to the world champions because, well, things happen there today. Australia against Norway, top board game. David Smurden against Magnus Carlsen. Uh, Carlsen. Uh, somehow got embroiled in a real slugfest. Dave Smurden from Australia did really, really well to get a very unbalanced position. And here, well, he's just full on attack. Carlson's queen is attacked. He snapped off the pawn on g2. Very risky indeed. Look at white's pieces. Uh, here, Smurden exchanged queens and he's still got the attack. Obviously, you know, Carlson just his development really poor on the queen side. And now rook g1. Um, well, Smurden could have played on in this endgame. Could have played this endgame. This is very, very tricky. Instead, he went for rook g1, and well, he went for the draw. He took rook for bishop and then just. A draw by perpetual check, but still, good achievement for for, for Dave. Only rated twenty five thirty one uh, compared to Magnus. Big achievement. Um, although I should say that Norway did manage to to win this match eventually. Uh, let's go to the women's section, where we can see another world champion, Ho Ifan, playing with the black pieces in the Latvia China match. And she's playing Dana Reznica Ozola. Apologies if my pronunciation isn't quite right. Um, Dana Reznica Ozola is in real life a politician. She's a Latvian finance minister. And she can also play a mean game of chess. She's rated 2243. I mean, uh, there's 400, over 400 points difference between these two. But watch what happens g5 all white pieces beautifully placed for the attack and now dana breaks through h5 and actually ifan has no counterplay here at all and um, but dana breaks through really nicely g6 queen in and now just a little bit of calculation. Looks that it could get messy, but no, she's calculated very well. Here, and bishop f5 check. This is the crunch move. Um, well, if, if the king goes back, it, the, it, there's going to be you know, utter, utter destruction with bishop takes e6 or knight g6 check. Or, 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 yeah, knight g6. So this was taken, but now an exchange up. And actually, Black's Queen really can't do much at all. And, well, this was just a case of mopping up. Um, if you follow my Twitter feed, Daniel King Chess, you'll see a wonderful photo that I retweeted of the moment when uh, Dana accepted Ifan's resignation. Um, it's wonderful. She simply can't believe that she's won this game. Let me just take you through the end of this. I mean, this was very carefully played at the end, um, but really, the Chinese world champion has absolutely no chance in this position. But nicely finished, and now Queen G4 check 
Obviously, if knight back, you can just trade, and if the king moves to f7, there's knight g5 check, or king goes the other way, and there's rook takes bishop check. So a very nice victory indeed. So fantastic win for the Latvian finance minister. Thanks for watching. Uh, more reports uh, in the next round, round five.